Our second panelist today is Shanti Sivaram. Shanti started her company Bling Entertainment in March 2007 in Star Screen Awards and FOI Online Awards in 2018 for her outstanding performance in Lipstick Under My Boot. And with these women will be our moderator, Mr. Somnath Sen. I think women should rule the world. That's, that's the way I think about it. Um, this is not the first time I've, I've uh, had interaction on Women's Day. And, and I think one thing that we men miss is the ability to bring life into this world. Only women can bring life, uh, which is why uh, if, if you've been following what's happening, the Zeitgeist, India, Pakistan, uh, Abhinandan, uh, I've learned more about Abhinandan's mother than I've learned about him. Uh, that's really what our society is all about. Uh, you ladies are uh, workers, you work, you're professionals, you're also mothers. Uh, so what I want to talk about is, is it more difficult being a woman in your work life? When I say work life, I just don't mean your professional life or what you do at home. Uh, I want to talk about your partners, how they contribute. Um, because a lot of my kids, when I interview them, I ask them, what do your parents do? They say, my dad's a businessman, he's a doctor, he's an engineer. And when I say, what does your mother do? They quiet down and say, oh, she's only a housewife. And I have to tell them that I'm sorry, your mother works harder than your father does. Uh, absolutely. Do you guys agree? Anybody here? <laughs> OK. All right. So <laughs> let, me, let me start with Meghna, because I know more about it. OK, let's. I'll start myself. I'll talk about my mother. My mom is my Shanti. Mike is here. Shanti, so tell me a little bit about uh, your journey. And then we want to specifically talk about what impediments you face as a woman. So, hello, can you hear me? Thank you, firstly, for having me. It's nice to be here and chat about Big this. Big fan of your films, I've told you. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you, although there are just two of them. <laughs> it feels good. So the journey has been actually uh, great so far, touch wood. Um, I've only worked with amazing people who have only nurtured and allowed me to grow. So that's been a great uh, you know, learning, because obviously there's going to be trouble and there's going to be uh, roadblocks everywhere. But I think if you're focused and if you have the right people backing you, that can be fantastic. So my partners are great. We all have the same set of ethics. We may obviously disagree on a lot of things, which is healthy. But our uh, sense, our value system is the same. Our core is the same. So then it doesn't matter. And we, we all believe that you need a great work-life balance. Otherwise, it can go crazy. Otherwise, there's no life, really. Because it's each that drives the other for me. I need my work as well to feel uh, that I'm doing something else as well for my own thing. It's not for anything else. I love going to work. I love when even after my child, I was happy to come back to work. And when I go home, I'm, I, I'm cherishing that time as well because I'm trying to balance. There's no such thing that balance exists, but I'm trying. Okay, um, <clears throat> a blunt question. Have yeah. you ever had somebody mansplain to you? Sorry, what? Mansplain, man explaining. No. I will tell you. Huh. I'm a man. Oh, no, 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 never, never. I've never had that, actually. Well, you're lucky. I'm okay. very lucky. I'm very, very lucky. Obviously, there was one incident, I remember. Uh, my partner's Atul Kazbeker, who's also very, very supportive. And there was an incident where I think one of our team uh, members was spoken badly to. He personally called that person in front of all of us and said, I'm going to really, really take you down. You cannot. This is just no way to behave. So that. W Code of conduct has been with us from day one. We've never, even if someone's spoken badly to me or a team member, it's never taken lightly. We've always replied very sternly, and it comes from the top. It's not just like, hey, I didn't like wh what you did. It's it's very, very a strongly worded email or a legal letter or anything that means an authority has called up and said, listen, it's not OK. So we don't want to work with you again. So we've taken that stand very, very clearly. So I, no, I've been very lucky. I've not faced this at all, actually. So, so your company officially has a policy? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, and I want Meghna to talk about that in a bit. But Meghna, tell us about your journey. Uh, when I first met you, I didn't know, but you were pregnant. Since then, you've had two kids. Yeah. Well, yes. you have three. Whistling Woods is your yeah, oldest first baby. baby. Yeah, my kids are quite jealous of me when I say that. How can you say that? Well, um, so good morning, everyone. Uh, it's been quite an amazing journey. And I think one of the things that I have really, really learned to um, appreciate is actually the men in my life. Because when I got pregnant, Whistling Woods was just about a year old. 
And at that point, uh, there was a little worry that, you know, um, because I was helming an institute, it was a new school, how was I going to manage? Uh, and uh, I had to assure everyone that, you know what, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be one of those women who works till their ninth month and, and, and you know, sh so I think that determination within me made it happen. I was working till a week before I delivered. And, um, and then the question to come back, I mean, I, I know a lot of you, you are college kids and you may not relate to me very well, but the, uh, the hardest part of a woman getting back to her career or to her job is after she has the baby, uh, that separation anxiety. It's not just from the child, it's from us as well. Um, three, four months of just living, breathing, seeing that baby and nurturing for it, uh, you just are so nervous to get back. And uh, one of the things I have to thank my organization for is that they literally bullied me into coming back into work. Um, my husband works with me, which made it so much easier for me to take a maternity break without any stress that somebody was going to take over my job, because that's what would happen otherwise. Um, and he also then came back home every night and said, please come back, I can't handle this. <laughs> so that made me feel good, because I felt, okay, maybe I need to go back, because he's really I having think he a, still feels the same He's way. really having a, um, you know, um, stress, uh, stressful time. Um, my father, who, um, first time I came back after three months, second time I was trying to take a longer maternity. That time six months wasn't official. Uh, he literally bullied me into coming back. He said, what are you doing? It's been four months, you have to come back. Um, I know if he was just my boss, it would be probably harassment for, for bringing me back to work. But because he was my father, it was, it was all right. Um, but I think if he hadn't done that, I would have probably, it would have been much harder for me to come back. So first of all, um, men at work, um, or just leadership at work, it could be women, uh, men or women who are in the leadership positions need to be uh, very empathetic towards uh, towards women, I feel. Um, yeah, equality, but they need to really understand what it takes to come back to work. I have a, a senior colleague at work right now, who and I spend the whole morning motivating her to come back to work, um, and she is uh, taking a break, and I can, I can feel her anxieties. And uh, the great thing is that because I've been through it, I've been able to really encourage her to come back giving her the assurance that, you know what, it's okay, you can, you can work from home, you can do part-time. And one of the things she said to me just this morning was that, you know, I know I have your support and I know you're great, but, you know, people look, people watch you when you leave early. You know, people in the organization judge you that, oh, why is she leaving at five just because she has the mom card? And I said to her that, you know what, I felt that as well. Being the boss, I felt that. But I just became immune to it because uh, at the end of the day, how many working hours do we dedicate? actually dedicate. And I've found women who are working uh, with kids at home are actually more, I don't know what it is, maybe guilt, maybe just passion or whatever, they want to give 120% of those six hours or seven hours that they spend at work. Um, so I feel that women are, uh, if you give them that encouragement to be able to work from home or whatever, they will actually give back more to the, to the, to the company than uh, men who are working 12 hours a day. Uh, so um, I think leadership is very important, which is what I, in my journey, I would say that that really worked for me. Well, uh, talking about leadership, uh, you bring up some very valid points. Um, Whistling Woods is an organization, the first one I worked at, where there are more women than men. Uh, and it comes from the top. Yours also? Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. And it comes from the top. Uh, and as I said, you know, uh, uh, all of you guys out there experience working for a woman once, and you'll realize why. Uh, the wars are not fought on this planet by, by women, they're fought by men. Um, what Meghna, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, why we have more women, uh, and uh, is it because of your empathy, understanding what, goes, what a woman goes through? Uh, you know, the, the, the radical policies you put in place, uh, you know, maternity leave, having a crash at work. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about what you've personally done to empower the women on our campus. So one that whenever we've interviewed for a position, we've never made that distinction whether we want to. I mean, I know companies that do that, that okay, if I'm handling, I have a hiring a head of accounts, it must be I'm, a I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop you, Amita. Yeah. I don't think that you consciously sit and say, yeah. she's got estrogen, he's got testosterone, let's take her. <laughs> but I think what happens is that when you interview or when they talk to other people, they get the sense that 
women are respected here. This is a good place to work. Perhaps they get more encouraged than other places. And, and I also am quite sensitive towards the men in my organization because a couple of times that we've had Women's Day celebrations, the first few years, Mr. Somnath Sen here stood up and said, what about Men's Day celebrations? So I we said, don't get roses. Come up, with the day. <laughs> Come up with the day. So after that, I don't know if you noticed, but we started giving chocolates to men as well. <laughs> and we said whether you eat it up or you take it for your wife or sister or mom, but you know what, you should celebrate this day as well. So um, personally, whenever I have addressed my organization, staff, faculty, I've always spoken about life work balance, but I've always said the life work balance applies for men as well. I feel very strongly that if men uh, do spend some more time at home, women can then actually spend more time at work as well. So that balance in today's day and age, uh, when both husband and wife are working, it's important that men as well find that balance. So we have, I know you look at women bringing their kids to work, but we have a lot of men who bring their kids. Yeah, I mean, he brings his son, but we have a lot of men bringing their kids um, at work. One of the, my favorite examples about our crèche is that when I uh, was, um, uh, when I was, uh, when I just had my kids, I brought my kids from day one, okay, from the time I started, I was feeding them, breastfeeding them at work, and I used to bring them up, and they had a room. I started feeling like there were other women who were pregnant, and I started encouraging them to bring their babies at work, and they had different sorts of problems, like, um, they said to me, ma'am, you know, we come by train, and how do we bring a small baby in, tr in the train? It's so much easier to just, you know, kind of um, leave the milk at home and, and leave them with our mom or mother-in-law. So I understood whatever works for them. Uh, but then I, ha I had an opportunity for another female colleague of mine who wanted to use the crash. And I said, great, we did it up. Um, you know, put everything out there. Um, a couple of weeks, no, so, sorry, the, the day she started, with her daughter came her husband. And her husband sat in the, cr in the crash with the baby while she worked on a computer, Disha. I was amazed. I was like, Disha, how come your husband is uh, over? She's like, you know, he has a BD role. He has to just travel for work or work out, you know, from wherever he is. And uh, he really wanted me to join back, so he's supporting me. I, I, you know, every time I think about this story, I have goosebumps because I just feel that India is changing, things are changing, men are taking more responsibility, and uh, you know, this is the kind of change that we want to see. So, uh, men or women, I think we I, should have I, make an environment which is. I, I didn't mean a crash only, I just said crash. Um, because I've been a house husband uh, for, for, for more than a year, taking care of Aman, my son, when my, my ex-wife was working. Um, coming to, uh, you know, you also said you have more women working. Yes. I want to bring something up here since we're talking about women and media. Uh, I went looking for an office uh, for a film I was making. And <clears throat> my ex-wife was with me and the owner of the house said, no women after 6 p.m. in this office. Anna's here, yay. That is here. Both, both of them. Oh, that is also here. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, don't say that. We love it, we love it. Hi, I'm so sorry. Sorry, we're going to do our little huggies. We're not together, right? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> Somebody else is going to be We can be together. Good, we got a chance to talk about mum things before you guys came. Oh, so, <laughs> so we're covering, we that. covering that. Yeah. It's after six, so I'm like, my, my producer, her mom is a PhD, my mom's a, mom is a PhD, we're educated. How can you put these kind of, have you experienced that being a woman in media that it is considered media women? No, I haven't actually. I've been very lucky, like I said, because from day one, the management agency has had a lot of women as a part of the, the crew, like the hands-on managers are all women. I think it's also because I, also. I know I do have I do have some very very uh, senior and like really really great men in the team who are fantastic. No, I love them. <laughs> I'm going to bring Ahana in. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, I, I started my life uh, career as an actor, and then I realized where the power was behind the camera. So, uh, well, no, no, directing. But Shanti is talking about. You know, most of the managers being so, managers have a sense of empowerment. As an actor, tell me about your experiences out there in the, in the real world. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, first of all, for the delay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, coming back to this, uh, uh, hi, everybody. And uh, I started you my. Her, right? I, I'm, you I'm must sure, have seen her I'm movies. sure they have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've, been, I've been around <laughs> for a bit. 
So, um, uh, you know, when we, when I think we started out uh, as actors, uh, you know, in once I graduated from Whistling Woods. Two years ago. Yeah, oh yeah, of course, yeah, it's two years ago. <laughs> Yeah, it just seems like yesterday. <laughs> but it does, you know, I didn't realize till I was talking to somebody and then I was like, oh, it's really been that long. You know, <laughs> one doesn't realize because the struggle becomes so long that, uh, you know, eventually when you start bearing fruits of the struggle, then you think that, are abhi to graduate hue Like, it's already been so long. I just recently, in fact, met a couple of, um, I met a couple of ex-students uh, over dinner and it, it just happened that I, you know, I was in the same place and then they happened to be there and, most of them have left acting careers and they were all my batchmates. And I think on that table, I'm the only one who's pursued a career in acting and a girl. Uh, so my class consisted of 20 students and I was just thinking about this this morning, you know. Um, it's 20 students in a classroom, four girls, 16 boys, out of which look at the ratio of the people who are working in the film industry as of today, from the first batch. In the girls, there's only me, in the boys, there is no one. Absolutely no boys in the film industry working as an actor. There is Shashank Khetan who's working as a director now, but he's not an actor. Pavel, uh, yeah, Pavel. I completely forgot about him. Neha. Neha, is she acting full time? I don't know. So I don't know. Like I'm, I'm not in touch with them, so I have no Gaurav idea what they are doing. Gaurav Akash. Gaurav and Akash. Yeah. Akash is doing a. Change Akash the topic. is doing a. <laughs> no, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. But I'm just saying, look at the ratio again. Amongst the girls, it's it's only Neha and me, and amongst the boys, it's like about five people. But it's also taken them that long. Uh, also, I don't know whether uh, Gaurav is not really doing mainstream, so I had no idea about what Gaurav was doing. Marathi mainstream. Yeah. So I didn't like the thing is that I'm I'm not aware of that space and that world. So uh, and Pavel, I think he's doing a couple of things. I have no idea what he's doing. But uh, there are. These people, there are very handful is what I'm trying to say. I was sitting on that table and there were like at least six, seven boys who were not doing anything and had gone back to Papa's business. So it really takes a lot of perseverance to keep pushing, keep pushing, accepting rejection on a daily basis um, on to, in terms of your physical appearance, in terms of uh, who you are, what have you done, are you still going to audition despite the fact that you've spent 15 years in the film industry and you know what you're doing and you know that you've done so much work. Even today I get calls where they say Ki, you have to test for that part. And I'm just like, okay, I understand if it's a big production house which is of some worth, then I do audition for it. So the struggle is real. The struggle is going to keep happening and there's absolutely no way out. And it's never that you've made it. If an Amitabh Bachchan still believes that he's still you know, going to go out there, wake up every morning, and going to go and do that job on a Sunday, where I often see him at famous studios, uh, at, uh, sorry, at Mehboob Studios. And I once bumped into him and I said, why do you work on a Sunday? So <laughs> he just said, this is what I do, because this is what keeps me alive, you know? So I always feel that, you know, for actors, it's never going to be easy. It's never, you always have to keep moving. But as moving. a woman, do you, do you feel like um, uh, male colleagues, do you think they get a little, uh, they, they get a free ride more than you? No, not at all. Do they get paid more? Yes. Well, there, there. that's what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, they do. Uh, do they have to jump through more hoops than you? Uh, do I don't you have think to jump so. Through more hoops? So the thing is that I, uh, at least like, uh, we've been really lucky actually in the last three years, the web has really given jobs to us. Mm -hmm. If I was still depending on films, and if I was entirely depending on theater or television, I probably would have not been able to do the kind of work that I'm doing as of today. I think the web has really come and changed the face of um, the kind of work that we are doing today. People look at us and go like, okay, you know, this is an actor of worth. Or this, sorry. This one. I didn't switch it off for a while. Um, so coming back to the, the pay gap. The pay gap is for real, guys and girls. Women have to fight the pay gap. Um, and I didn't realize this till I was recently part of a web show. And uh, mine and my, my actor, my co-actor's role is the same. We were paired opposite, uh, opposite each other. And uh, it just happened to be that, you know, there was a conversation going on. And suddenly somebody spoke about, uh, you know, what the contracts are like. And my contract and his contract was exactly the same except for the pay. And I was just getting a few lakhs lesser than him. It wasn't too much. 
but i was like why am i getting paid less than this guy you know and it was really weird because i was like aren't we doing the same thing and it i didn't realize it till i started speaking to a lot of female counterparts and then they started realizing i think it's been a realization over a period of conversations and a period of time that you go like okay you know we're all doing the same job we're all doing the same show but we all are getting paid in like unequally and you spend good, more um, you sorry, spend more on makeup okay sorry you spend more time yeah and makeup. i am called like, what are extra for hair and makeup so if i'm yeah so you know what if my contract uh, says if their contract says 12 hours those guys turn up at 9 pm for a 9 pm shift but i turn up at 8 uh, sorry uh, 9 am but i turn up at 8 am for a 9 am shift you know because i go like then the channel will just be like oh but you need one hour extra for hair and makeup but i'm like but i have hair and makeup to do <laughs> unless you want me to just come like out of bed like the way i look i'm happy to do that you know but this is not what uh, you know i yeah so i'm just saying that the change here is very positive because i know in the 80s and 90s it was about uh, it was accepted you know even somebody like shri devi would accept that she would get paid less than jitendra you know that was just accepted and it was okay today the fact that women are realizing and women are making i mean people people like her who make films like nirja and tumhari sulu and make over 100 cr i know but you're not bring it up enough Hund, you know 100 crore movies like radhi okay but yeah. close yaar yeah. um you know and make such an impact with a woman at, at the helm of the film is just so amazing so i feel like women like her can make that difference because when you hire those women actresses you make sure that you pay them the same as the men having said that <laughs> not just right women centric films having said that meena uh, fact uh, heroes are known as 100 crore heroes asan has worked in three films which made 100 crores she is not a 100 crore heroine she will be replaced you're I'll, the main I'll lead have actress please. i'll have to cut i'll have like to like i'll have to okay. barge in here um of a film like mani karnika is what i'm saying okay a film like padmavati which the f- the film had an equal amount of role for the woman as well as the man i think when that equality see and the women have to be mindful as actresses today i am mindful like when i select a role i even on the web space at least there i have the upper hand right now because that's where at least i'm doing enough work so you know i when i go to a filmmaker a, a filmmaker approaches me and says this is your role um like i'm i mean not not bragging but i've said no to 10 balaji old balaji shows till now and it's been it's been constantly like the male has a a bigger part or a longer part than the female and i'm not okay with that because i really want to do roles in the web at least in the web uh, you know as actresses we have that space where i go like i select the part i want to do and you write the role according to what we think is right also so it has to be collaborative or else don't come to me so there are a lot of filmmakers you know who are now i think moving to web in fact i've met so many filmmakers it's been amazing megna like you know i go and do meetings with these really big, big filmmakers and they all are coming to us and they are going like oh we really want you to do our show and i go like but you just made such a huge film like like 15 years ago you know you and Yeah, I didn't even know. Like at that time, I was dying to get a meeting with you, and today I'm sitting in dictating terms and conditions, and I'm saying no, I don't want to do your show, or I want to do your show. You know. I'm going to bring Daria in, but just before that, quick question: Dirty picture. Did Vidya Balan make more than Asir Uddin Shah? I wasn't ah, negotiating with Balaji that time. I don't have access right, to his all agreement. Right. <laughs> all right, my point is made. Daria, so um, we talked about. Um, producers we talked about educators and amazing women super women everybody is a super woman here uh, you direct um, and uh, directing is uh, been a male bastion was still uh, a director deals primarily with men the cinematographer is mostly man sound recorder is production designer um, tell me about that experience having to tell men explain women explain to them what you want I think for me it's always a very tricky question actually the gender because I'm always trying to run away from just gender specification mm. because I don't believe in gender specification I don't believe in national specification when I'm coming let's say to Busan or I'm coming to Berlinale and I represent India I feel comfortable with it you don't look Indian <laughs> yeah it's, it's this is most of the time questions and they're like but you don't look Indian or uh, so where are you from and I have issues with it because I feel as we progress we need just like get out with this 
strange labels that we're putting on ourselves. Or I'm mother, or I am um, Ukrainian, or I'm Indian, I'm woman, I'm man. Yes, you can if you choose to play the game, but I'm not choosing to play, to play the game. Um, till now, um, just talking about labels, for example, I can't be in competition in Mami Film Festival, as well as Busan Film Festival, because I'm Ukrainian and I'm not Asian director. In Ukraine, I'm considered to be, of course, um, Indian director, and um, I can't apply for Ukrainian funds because I'm Indian director. I can't apply for NFDC, for example, because I'm Ukrainian uh, director. And I have a lot of issues with it. Same with the, with the gender. Absolutely. That when, for example, I, like somehow most of my boys who work in our office, they are it's boys. We just finally, we got incredibly talented writer. And she's here. Um, and she was our Hi. behind the scenes. Um, and she, I think she was our first girl in the, in the office. But when I'm hiring someone, I don't look who they are. I don't look where they are from or whether they are again man or woman. I just look at whether they are talented or not. Have you hired any Ukrainians? Um, no, I didn't. So, so I can't say that for me it's an important issue. Of course, at the same time, I can't be bl um, blind about it because, yes, when I'm on the set, for example, I make sure that I'm wearing, like I always think what I will wear tomorrow because I know that I have to cover my breast. Though, like, have, like I'm, I was lucky I didn't have uh, big breasts. <laughs> and it is a issue because I have a friend, I have a friend, who, she's a director, she's an incredible director, she has really big breasts. And she has, she used to have long hair and she's saying, because when I'm on set, I need to cover my breast. Because all light men and people who are working for me, they just look at me. And like, she's always like trying to wear something baggy. And it is an issue. And uh, do, you, do you feel any pushback from, from, from your key crew, cinematographers, sound recordists? Uh, why do I take orders from a woman? Have you ever felt that? Um, it's interesting. I think sometimes they feel that they are pushed back. But um, <laughs> definitely, subconsciously, uh, when I talk even to some, some of my like, key members, um, they might be uncomfortable taking some orders. But I don't know whether because I'm a woman or just because I'm pushy at some point of time. So I think. It also comes from my mindset. So when I'm having debate, I don't come from the point of view, oh, I'm a woman, listen to me, or I'm so cool, now I'm the boss, listen to me, no. And I feel that's why also consciously, they don't feel threatened there. So then it's just an equal battle. And my ministry with the industry, and I remember when I was struggling, I was meeting different people, I was, um, first I was thinking maybe I should work as an AD or DA, and I met a lot of directors who wanted me to work with them, and our first con conversation usually was starting from, hey, so what's up, babe? And as soon as this babe was coming, for me it was no go. And, um, and unfortunately, I w I'm not a very straightforward person. I would just smile, and then he would introduce me to the entire team, and then I just wouldn't show up forever. And, and I, it was a big issue, because the, the way how we interact with each other, or how maybe how we used to interact, I don't know, I, I hope that right now something is changing. But, yeah, but it, it is very important that we understand that if we're professionals, we use just professional language. Mm -hmm. But other issue which I feel that right now with the social media, with everyone is trying to be hero, and you know, like all of us, we're fighting either uh, for war or anti-war or against Pakistan or for women, against women, me too. And we are this, you know, yeah, the, the cliche word, the Facebook barriers. And, it's a, and as soon as we start, Facebook barriers, we're actually playing rhetoric of the entire issues. So in this case, nothing is kind of being prominent and important. So instead of actually doing something, we're just writing. So for me, if we're talking about, let's say, gender issues, what's the most important is like three things, is self-realization. For example, when I'm hiring the person, and yes, sometimes I feel when I had a boy and a girl, my preference was towards the boy because I feel that I can connect to him more, I will be able to explain certain things more. And, but then, for me, it's self-realization, what I'm doing, why I want to hire a boy instead of the girl. Do I feel threatened? Do I feel insecure? What? Then self-analysis, why do I feel threatened or insecure? And then third thing is implementation. When I'm taking some actions, yeah, fine, I realize something, I analyze, but now what can I do to change that? Because when right now everyone is fighting just in words, I feel the most important thing to fight in action. I don't need to write on Facebook or just to share some article. I can just be nice to my women you know, filmmakers. 
Because we, I think everyone will, will agree, we as women, we just don't support each other. Oh, yeah. You know, we will be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yes, let's support each other. But then they're like, yeah. oh my God, she's just so dumb. <laughs> I can't even hire her. And it is, it is like that, especially in industry. You know how, how everything, like everyone just with everyone and everyone is against <laughs> everyone. And it's a big issue. And right now, unfortunately also, I feel that as a country, we really step back. If in the 70s, um, we had like Prutima Bedi who was running on the street uh, absolutely naked, yeah, just as a protest of, you know, I that it's that. my body and I can, I can do that. Yeah. Right now, imagine if someone will right now run naked on the streets of, I don't know, Bandra. Well, it will be oh, intense. We don't go that route. It will be we intense. Don't want to get into politics. I, I want to bring. Um, no, but, uh, but, sure, but sure. when we're talking about gender, we have to talk about politics because oh, the absolutely. question oh, whether are we absolutely. being accepted <laughs> as, absolutely. as um, we women. I just, yeah. if I may interrupt, Please I think uh, the core of what she's saying is lovely. What she started with saying is that it, it's not, you're not trying to play the gender card. So I think if you just open your mind up and see, hey, I should get that job because I really deserve it, not because I'm going to play the woman card that, hey, men have better f facilities or better opportunities. The minute you stop doing that, you're, you, you know, you're not feeding nonsense to yourself. You're not getting into that self-pity zone into victimizing yourself and seeing, nay, nay, men have better opportunities, you know, because I'm a woman, the maybe you just didn't, weren't good enough, in all honesty. That comes with a lot of acceptance. Sorry, and uh, just one thing, when we spoke about the role of, you know, movies, in fact, it's also very business related. At the end of the day, if my film, because we manage talent as well, besides producing film, if today one of my newer actors is getting to co-star, whether it's equal or not, I, I can't debate on the script yet, but if it's a better known actor, then, and he can demand a certain price because he's delivered a performance, not just because, oh, he's an actor, but because he's delivered hits, he's justified to get paid more. So I'm saying in those cases, you have to be practical. And it could happen the reverse way as well. I have new actors that are male, and they could get a role with a woman who's far more popular. And she will be paid more. So there's no grudge about that, which is, I think, the point she was trying to make. That no, no, Raj, Rajkumar Rao is my student uh, from FTI. And uh, I've heard these stories. So no, 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 no debate about that. I want to talk about something a little different. I'm, I'm, I want to talk about social conditioning, uh, generations, tens of thousands of years of social. So my friends would get shocked that I'm a house husband, uh, in spite of having two master's degrees and done whatever I've done. Um, when Maharshi Karve married a widow, mm. the women in his gully stood in line to spit on him because he'd married a widow. Mm. So sometimes women are their worst enemies. I agree. I think that's something I want to that add quickly, I know we're running a uh, short time, but yesterday I had a student interview me two, three days ago, and they were talking for their magazine, and he said to me, uh, off the records, I want to ask you a question. I said, sure. He said, my mom always said that women bosses are horrible. They are, like, really, really bad to work with, so, you know, whenever you get a job, don't work with her. So I said, that is a stereotype, and that is a stereotype that we need to break, and like Daria said, by changing ourselves. Yeah, unless we change, we, that stereotype is not going to break. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing about women being women's worst enemies, I haven't experienced it because I've created an environment around me to facilitate that. So if I, as a leader, mm -hmm. have set a good example, the other leaders who are women are expected to set that example. And we have had women who are HODs who have been horrible to their staff, mm -hmm. yes. and I have called them on it, like she said. So it's important that you make that change and change that stereotype. And changing stereotypes is never easy. It is always going to take some time. It's going to take. But if people like us can do it, we can really, and I, I hate hearing that. I was Too much to talk about it, I think, in the past. But I think it's, uh, it, it was very liberating for me. And, I'm, and I think I'm a very different person. I think post my article also. Um, I didn't expect the article to be like an All India edition, when I did the interview with Renuka, who's also a friend of mine from college. Um, she's a very like well-known correspondent from the Bombay Times, and she's known me all her life. And uh, you know, she just came home and she just chatted about it. And I, I think one thing led to another, and I didn't even realize that so many things had happened with me as an actor, as a woman. Uh, and you know, it was just so liberating for me to just talk to her about it. She took about two weeks before she published, two or three weeks, I think I'd forgotten also about the interview. Three weeks ke baad, I think she published the article and uh, she sent me the article on email and she was like, just proofread it. 
and I remember I was in Lucknow shooting for Rangbaz. I was, uh, that day it was an off day and Lucknow is my hometown. So it was really like a full circle for me. And it really had started with me being molested by, uh, you know, a cousin of mine in Lucknow when I was a child. And I didn't speak about it for years because I just didn't realize that it was not my fault. And I kept thinking that it's my fault that I let him touch me or I let these things happen to me. So, you know, although you may think that, oh, I'm such a fearless, confident girl out there in Bombay, you know, surviving, working every day. There are lots of things that happen, you know, in the past that you allow things to happen. And those things lead to who you really become in your professional space. And I think the minute I began the article with first accepting my fault, I said, yes, I was a different person a few years ago. And I would not want to be that person for the rest of my life because I do. I want to lead by example. I want to be able to be that person in the film industry who came out of nowhere, got educated, came into the films, is working on her own terms, is not ready to sleep for roles, is not ready to be okay with parties, and I'm not absolutely be ready to you know let somebody walk all over me as a human being. So that's the stand I took. That's so I think it 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 really did, and you know I I think I realized that through. Speaking about it, I have really liberated myself as a human being. Forget right. woman, man. Yeah. This can happen to yeah, any yeah. of us. It happens to men. men. And it's such a deep conditioning, you know, sir, because the guys just don't speak about it all their lives. Imagine like some boy who was molested at a younger age by a bus conductor or by a school teacher, by uncles living in those houses. And the conditioning, and I really have to thank my film, you know, because that film really changed my conversations. It changed the way I look at another human being. It can be man, woman, anybody. And these conversations happened through all our panels because there were five women sitting in that panel and everybody had a point of view and none of them were wrong, whether it was a 20-year-old Plabita or like a 50-plus-year-old uh, you know, Ratna Pathak Shah or an Alankrita who was sitting there. Everybody had stories. And all of us realize that we are all in the same boat and there's absolutely no reason why we are pulling each other down. Yeah. Whether you're a man, woman, anybody, transgender, everybody's been through shit. Yep. So let's not like try to put more shit into other people's faces. The good thing is that there is a conversation right now. Mm -hmm. There is an awareness, there's a realization. So you would take a stand. Today I know that tomorrow if I go into this meeting with this director, this director has the power to molest me or to say something that will harass me. But I have the choice, tell him, thank you, sir. I do not want this meeting to be continued. I'm OK. You do not want to give me this film. It's fine. But I have the right to walk out of this house right now because your conversations are making me uncomfortable. So I think that is very important. And that's a stand one needs to take for themselves. So I don't judge anybody for whatever that they have done in their lives or how they want to facilitate their careers. So like Daria, you said, you have to introspect and take responsibility. Um, are we great? I can't <laughs> help you. I'm, I'm very, I'm oh very God. happy for all these women, you know. And um, so th I think that's important that you start thinking five million times before sending idiotic message yeah. or I don't know, dick yeah. pic to someone. Absolutely. And but there um, are two sides to it, Daria. There are huh? two sides to it. And and Meghna knows this. I was accused of sexual harassment. Hmm. Um, and Meghna knows uh, nothing happened. Uh, but what it did to me was devastating. Yeah, but see, it was devastating like, because like it changed the way I interact with yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, I am a very open person and I was socialized. 20 years I lived in the US. I give warm hugs and she said, so many need to step back. Uh, it, it is, it is yeah, horrendous. Both sides, both yeah. sides, whether it happens to yeah, you yeah. or you're accused falsely yeah, yeah. of I something like that. I think that, you know, to sum it up a little bit because I think Ritika is already on the mic. The oh. Me Too movement has, has really swung a certain way, right? And yeah. it's that, that, that force that it's swung with that there will be collateral damage. Yeah. Like there revolution. will be collateral damage, yeah. yeah it's like a revolution. So there'll be collateral kill. damage for men, for women, for families who are involved. And that's something that we have to go through again to break a certain stereotype. And it's happened, and it's great that it's happened uh, to a large extent that people are more conscious. I feel there is collateral damage in the fact that men can't be men or they have to be different around women 
Now, like after all their lives of being a certain way, they have to change, but it's okay. It's not going to kill them. <laughs> Nothing's going to make a difference. When I came to Bombay, people were showing me, you know, like, so don't come to this man, don't come to this yeah. old man. The stereotypes were already there. Yeah. Or they, because they will hit yeah. on you. And I'm like, okay, so it, it means it's fine. Now, for I know that it's not fine. Yeah. The fact that he's pervert or he will hit me, it's not fine. Yeah. And I know, yes, I can't, like, I'm not the one who will be writing letters in the newspaper because I, I just. It doesn't person. work for me. But I know all I can do, I just have a list of people with whom I just will not work. Correct. Absolutely. I'll oh. make a point of not to work with them. Okay, we have to finish, but before that, you were talking about lipstick under my burqa. If you guys haven't seen it, go see that film. <laughs> not just because of, of sure Ahana, have. but it yeah. sort of wraps up a lot of the things we've been talking about here today. Uh, thank you all thank very you much. Very I'm sure she's going to uh, thank her. Thank you. Uh, I'm always against the, you know, attending them, the only women. So I asked Rahul first, and like, there better be a man on the panel, and then we had Soam. So. <laughs>